All right, we are back with another episode of the 2021 MLB Draft Show. Today, I am joined with Georgia Hurler, Jonathan Cannon, and uh, our good buddy Ian Smith. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. For sure, man. Uh, so I, I kind of want to jump right into it with you and and talk about 2020. Um, you're freshman, man. You, you come out of the bullpen. Uh, you don't allow a run. Uh, and you pretty much dominate anytime you take the bump. Um, with with that sort of momentum going, what kind of feeling do you get when they when they call off the rest of the season? What could have been? Um, it was it was definitely hard. You know, um, we just had so we just had so much pitching last year. It was unbelievable, and it was a great learning experience for young guys like myself to. Uh, watch guys like Emerson, Hancock, Cole Wilcox, Ryan Webb, CJ Smith go about their business every day and not have to put that kind of pressure on ourselves as freshmen, knowing that those guys have been there, done that, and we can really rely on them. Um, But I think that's really – I think that experience has led me – led me into this year and figuring out how I'm going to go about my business and – try to be the best player that I can be for my team this year. Well, they shut things down and really nobody knew what what to do at that point. There was no ball going on. You really couldn't play. And then um, I knew you were eventually supposed to go play in Cape Cod League this summer, which, as we all know, didn't happen. But you ended up playing with uh, a little bit with the Gainesville Braves, the team owned by Micah Owings. Uh, How was that experience for you? It was awesome. You know, the Sunbelt League as a whole got canceled around – beginning of June, I want to say, and he kind of, him and the Alfred, Alfred Aviators coach just were kind of like, we're going to play. We're going to, we got COVID tested just about every week and we did follow all the guidelines and everything. We were able to play about three games a week and it was just us and the Gainesville team and Alfred. And we just basically, it was basically just inner squad sandlot games for about a month and a half. And I think that was just so beneficial for me. I have to throw about, 20, 30 innings, which was huge for me. What was the ramp up like? Did you, did you have to ramp back up for that, or did you kind of just go in a little cold? So it's actually my little brother is a uh, freshman in high school or a sophomore in high school, and he um, he's also he's a catcher. So it kind of worked out. Oh, nice. I was able to uh, throw to him over quarantine and everything. We kept both of us busy, so it, it was awesome for me. Uh, I want to follow up really quick on that because I know your stuff, uh, your freshman year uh, at Georgia was was really starting to – it was burgeoning. I mean, you shoved a couple sixes. Where did your stuff end up, you know, in the the summer league here? Did did you push any bigger numbers or – I think for me it was more about becoming more consistent up there. I think during the season I'd be uh, 92, 93 – touching fours, fives, and sixes every now and then. But I think for the summer, for me, it was more about building that endurance of being able to go in there for four or five innings. And that that's all I threw this summer. That was my maximum. I kind of got cut off at around 70 pitches. For sure. So I think it was keeping that velo around 94, 95, bumping sixes and sevens when I can. But being able to hold that velo for when I get in, when I get up in my pitch count. Well, besides uh, keeping that velo and, and keeping your endurance throughout games, what uh, what do you think you worked on primarily talking about your off-speed pitches this summer, or what do you think came along to your liking as you worked on it as, uh, as much as you could? Mm-hmm. I think last last year my slider was my best pitch, and I relied on that pitch the most. Me and Coach Kenny threw that pitch all the time last year. And I, I thought I had a good changeup. Um, we just didn't throw it as much. But I think that and then my curveball. My curveball became a pitch that I rely on a lot now um, just because it's so – there's such a velo difference in it. It's a, it's usually around 81, 82. Um, but my changeup's probably 85, 86. So that velo difference between my slider, which is usually like 85, 86, um, is a big help for me. Yeah, that's a firm. Uh, that's a firm slider. When, when we dig in on your film, um, the the changeup and the slider definitely pop. I I agree with you. I, I think the I think the changeup is really good. I, I think it's a, an above average offering. Um, 
I'm excited to see what you what you do with the curveball this year because it wasn't deployed as much last year, uh, at, at least at least uh, deeper in counts. So yeah. excited to see a little bit more of that. But um, I don't let me ramble on. I, I kind of want you to tell the viewers who you are as a pitcher. Like, talk to us a little bit about how you go about your business, your arsenal, and how you attack lefties and righties. Okay, so um, I think one thing that I worked on a lot during the summer was the idea of this this postseason you saw a lot of talk about tunneling and guys throwing pitches out of the same arm slot and ian anderson was a big one talking about his uh change up in fastball how they tunneled so well and hitters just couldn't hit it i think that was the biggest thing when it came to my curveball is it allowed it gave me an extra offering because my fastball i i would rather if i could choose i would rather throw it low in the zone but my misses tend to be up around the chest. So if I'm going to miss up there, I want another pitch that looks like it's starting up up around my chest, but it's going to drop below the zone. That's kind of where the curveball came along and became a swing and miss pitch for me over the summer. But I really like – I don't really have an issue throwing right on right changeups. Um, I think that's sort of a thing people are starting to come back to with a changeup. And then, you know, slider – the slider is just a pitch that I've I probably have the most confidence in out of all my pitches. That was the first thing me and Coach Kenny worked on when I got here to Georgia, and the pitch that he definitely has the most confidence in calling, whether it be o o three two one two, I can throw it in any count as a different pitch. So if I want to throw one, bounce one in the dirt o and two, I feel comfortable doing that. But if I need to land one for a strike. Two and zero oh or three and one. I'm also comfortable doing that as well. Well, coming into twenty one, depending on how the, the college baseball season is going to look, we're not sure how that is now. Um, you potentially could be the guy for Georgia's rotation this year. Um, how does that feel? How do you feel about your confidence going into this year as potentially being that guy for the team? Yeah, I think we have three really good arms. Um, I think me, Ryan Webb, and C.J. Smith are all legit guys and Webby and CJ have both done really well this fall. I think both have progressed a lot since last spring, especially Webby. Webby is, uh, he worked really hard this off season getting his velo up and he's been consistently mid nineties with a really good off speed pitch. And I think he's going to surprise some people this spring. And I, I really think you could put all three of us in any order and I think that's the mindset Coach Kenny has right now is I think we could go in any order and be equally as effective. Um, obviously, losing Colin Emerson on the weekend was tough, but I think we got a we got a lot of freshmen as well that can really throw it and really throw it well. So it'll be a – it's a challenge replacing those two, but I think we definitely have the talent to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ryan Webb was not – he was not a foreign name uh, on draft day. There were some there were some clubs interested in him. Um, but, you know, it, it, John, you kind of speak to it. Webb knows how good he is, uh, and he can come back to school, and he's going to have opportunities. So um, I did want to kind of rewind and talk to you a bit of, uh, a little bit about having Hancock and, and having Wilcox. Um, I'm actually up in Seattle. Ian is up in uh, – or he's down in uh, Florida, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, – I mean, I, I get, I'm going to have a firsthand look at Emerson here when, you know, in not too much time, but what was it like kind of studying under him and uh, having him lead the team? And like, what did you take away from a guy like that? I think both of them was just the amount of work ethic they have on and off the field. I think coach Kenny put it the best way. I met with him the first day of fall ball last year. He said that Emerson off the field and in practice works works like he's trying to earn a spot on the team like that he just is that it's not given to him that he's trying to earn that spot on the field but when he goes out on the field he pitches like he's the best guy on the field and i think i think that's the biggest thing is just because you're successful or you're good doesn't mean that you're necessarily excused from working hard during practice there are always things especially right now with all the analytics and so many things that you can get better at um, is really focusing in on your weak points and working on that during the time that you have and then going out there with complete confidence on game day, just ready to run through some people. 
Well, yeah, talking about the the, the improvements your, your whole rotation has made going into this year, and you just mentioned the analytics, uh, the Georgia player development posts a lot of stuff on Twitter about all your track man rate and your rap soto stuff like that. How much have you guys really leaned on that this summer, and how much has that helped your development going forward since you've got to Georgia? It's been huge. I'd never heard of – I had heard that's those – words and vertical break and horizontal break thrown around before college but when I got here I had no idea what it was and it's been key for all of us we all use it all the time and we kind of have it we there are two different types of pitchers that we have on the team we got guys that spin the ball really well guys like Will Childers or even Webby that spin the ball 24 25 2600 with their fastball and get insane amount insane amount of vertical break i'm not that kind of guy i'm a low spin rate guy i throw balls that sink and dive so it's two different types of pitchers and i was more similar to cole wilcox in that fashion he was a low spin rate guy throwing balls that ran like two feet he was unreal (laughs) but emerson was a high spin rate guy so it you kind of had to look at it. We kind of look at it, try not to compare each other's stats because they kind of mean two different things. Like I'm never going to try and get my spin rate higher or vertical break higher because that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I want that, I want that low vertical break and high horizontal. And that's why the slider has been so effective for me because when my fastball dives one way and my slider kind of follows that path, but then goes the other way. You know, being, six foot six and having your release height i don't i don't think throwing a sinker is the worst thing in the world (laughs) yeah i mean that thing's gonna die at the plate just run in on angles uh talk to us if you have a baseball on you show us how you throw that slider show us how you throw that curveball because i'd love to kind of know your thought process and and your and your you know i guess your mindset when you're when you're letting it go uh let's see if i have one over here okay so the slider right here see if i can face the thing so here we have we have the horseshoe right here. I kind of go across the two seams right here, sort of how a lot of people throw their curveball and kind of get my mm-hmm. thumb up against this other seam. And it's really, for me, it's just about throwing it as hard as I can. I think that's what I learned a lot. Uh, my freshman year was not trying to spin it or spin it any more than it needs to. It was trying to get around it and really pull down hard at the very end to get that side spin on it. And that that's what has worked for me the most. How about the curve? The curveball, I go completely in the horseshoe. So I'm I'm digging in to the seams right here on the side. So kind of opposite the slider. But really, it's about getting my middle finger into the seam and really trying to pull down hard when I'm coming through it. Pretty standard grips. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the biggest difference for, between me and most people is my change of grip. Is I've, I've actually never met anyone that throws it like me i was this is one of those things that i was in high school couldn't throw a change up wasn't very good was just playing around with grips in the bullpen and landed on something along a three finger change oh, the it's pitch sort fork of a, sort of across <laughs> the seam and i have my thumb completely underneath it and i'm really just the last thing on it is my middle finger and it gets that kind of side spin on it that makes it dive so that, that's just such a field pitch for me that I've just played around with for a long time. Well, I mean, change up grip feels way more important than, you know, any conventional, you know, uh, grip, if you will. So yeah, I agree. I think that'd be my last baseball question for you. If Joe, if you got anything, uh, you know, um, I guess my last question would be uh, as, as far as baseball goes, you know, we got, nine months now until the 2021 draft and you're going to be a young eligible uh you know pitcher this upcoming year uh what do you hope to accomplish between now and 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 next july to maybe improve your stock or just improve yourself as a pitcher i mean i think one of the things is just pure strength is losing that time i was able to lift during quarantine and everything but it's completely different being at home trying to lift and being around a team and being in a college environment with all the resources that we have, it's difficult to kind of build that strength at the rate that we're used to. So I think one thing is definitely getting stronger, which I'll be able to do over this break before spring season starts. It'll help even more with endurance and being able to hold velo for longer. But I think the other thing 
for me would be commanding my fastball just a little bit better. And it's not that I'm not able to throw strikes with it. I don't really have a problem with that. It's make sure I'm locating it in the zone where I want to. So I'm a, as I said before, I'm a low spin rate guy trying to throw balls that sink at the knees. And sometimes I like to throw it up in the zone and the low spin rate does not do well when it's up in the zone. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good observation to know now. <laughs> you haven't given up an earned run yet, so it doesn't like, sound like you've made the mistake too bad. Yeah, <laughs> trying to keep it out of the middle of the zone with the fastball. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I don't have any more questions. No, no more baseball questions from either one of us. We do like to to end kind of on a um, on a question that keeps you on your toes. Uh, you know, you're down in Georgia, so. I wanted to ask, um, well, you've only got 11 innings in, so let's let's keep it more well-rounded. Um, was there a school on any of your recruiting visits, if you took any of your recruiting visits in high school, uh, that when you arrived, it was just like, no, not this? <laughs> I don't really think – I think when I was in high school, I was just so – like blown away that I was able to go through the process that I was just like, I was kind of just like in that mindset, like I'm happy to be here. Like, this is awesome. Like college locker rooms, college field, like, whoa, there's a big stadium behind home plate. Like, I think I was just so overwhelmed with the whole college aspect of it. I was like, after every single place I went to, I was like, yeah, I'm going here. <laughs> man that was only like 15 months ago <laughs> no, it, it, it's crazy that it wasn't it really wasn't that long ago but it uh it, it's sure going by quick well hey man you you've made a loud impression on us um we've we've got a, a pretty high grade on you right now i know a lot of other publications do as well really impressed with your stuff and how you command the ball looking forward to seeing you over extended innings i think you've got a lot to offer in that regard um, but, um, yeah, we're going to be watching. We're going to be rooting, man. Uh, Ian, if you don't have any other questions, uh, good, that'll man. do it. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, Hey, thanks for joining us. This has been another episode of the 2021 MLB draft show. Jonathan, you have been an excellent guest and we'll catch you next time. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank thanks, you. Bye, Jonathan. <laughs>